Hello everybody, in this video I will show you some interesting properties of a hyperbolic or funnel shaped magnet array that you see here. As you can already see, I've arranged 32 of these 5 mm cube magnets in this funnel shaped pattern. And I have two of these arrays and all of the magnets are facing the same direction with each array. So here we have all north pole facing outwards and here we have all south pole facing outwards, meaning these two arrays have opposite polarity. And that is the reason why you can attach them together like this, and you can also attach them together like this, so you get this nice hyperbolic shape. And I will show you with a Gauss meter and also with a magnetic viewing film the field shape and interesting properties of these arrays. So, first off, I will take my field viewer. This is a color gradient field viewer with an LED strip around, so you will get a nice holographic image of this field. So, first I take the magnet array like this and put it underneath the field viewer. I will put it close to it, then you get this shape. And now I will just rotate it a bit underneath, so you can get a better holographic view of it. Remember, I'm just taking the array like this and rotating it. Then I flip it over to the side, like this. You can already see the block wall or inertial plane right here, separating the two polarities. And then, if I move it over like this, you can see we also get an inertial plane right around the top here. So basically, we have two inertial planes over here on this array, which indicates multiple poles, more than two poles. And I just take the array like this and rotate it underneath the film, so you can get it nice side view of what the field looks like and of course also the top pole just remove it from here like this yeah that is what one of these arrays looks like under the field viewer and now I'm going to take the second array and attach them together just like this and show you what the field looks like here so, as you can see, we get one big bright inertial plane in the center. Then, if I flip it over to this side, it's the, the field itself that you can see in black, blue and green. These are just different color gradients that indicate the field strength. So, the brighter the color, the weaker the magnetic field density is. and the darker the color, meaning black or blue, the stronger the field density is. So this is what you see underneath this viewer. And of course on the other side it looks the same. So now I will take this array and attach them together like this. So we get this nice hyperbolic shape. And viewed under the viewing film you will see we get here an inertial plane, then right in the center. This is a bit hard to view, but you should be able to see this white line. Maybe if I turn the lights off. And also on top of here. So if I turn the lights on again, you can see how the field itself extends when I just hold the magnet array underneath like this. Then I will turn it around like this and you can see the shape of the field that we've seen earlier. And of course on this side it also looks the same. So this is what this array in different combinations looks underneath the field viewer. And now I will show you some very interesting properties of this array with a Gauss meter. But first to show you an interesting aspect of it. I will take a compass 
And remember, this is a compass that you view from the side, so if it shows south here, this is south pole. So, as you can see, we've got south pole here, and north pole on this side. But this is not entirely true, and the compass can tell you that. So, I take my Gauss meter, and um, here you have the polarity reading, then the unit is in millitesla. So, yeah, kind of obvious what I'm doing here. Here is my probe with the hall sensor sitting right on top of here, this little black spot. And now I will just show you that all of these magnets are arranged with south pole facing outwards, as you can see. So, on the side here, we get an overall south pole field, of course. And on the top here, if I stay away from it at quite a distance, it also shows south pole field here. But if I get closer to the center hole here, it will give me a reading of zero millitesla, meaning we have right on this spot on top of here no magnetic field. But above it we do have a magnetic field. And if I get closer, you can see the polarity itself flipped to north. And if I get closer, the field strength, of course, increases. And we get a quite strong field in the center, which is of north polarity. So if I take the magnet array to the side, again, on the side here is, we have south pole. Then we have this inertial plane right here again that you saw on that under the field viewer before. This is here with we have zero flux density and the field flips from south to north again. Remember we have north here and north over here. So all of this area is also north pole. But if I put my probe inside here, you can see the reading decreases as I get closer, it goes down to zero. So right here we have no magnetic flux. And if I put it further into it, it flips back to south. But this is of course because the probe itself, if you, for example, take Let's just take a magnet like this, we have south here, I think, yes, and north here on the other side. But if I hold the probe like this and then just let the magnet pass, it will show south here and south here, which is of course not correct because I would have to rotate the probe 180 degrees to show me north down here. So if I put the probe through the center hole here, like this, and the polarity flips, it shows south, but it's actually north, of course. Just to keep that in mind. And I can show you this, with north over here. And if I rotate the array, we also have north over here. But as you can see, if I put that inside, the field itself flips. If I rotate my probe 180 degrees, we also have north here. So basically what's happening, we have around here, or north, then we have an, an inertial plane, but where the, the flux density is zero, right around here, and on this side we have also north pole. And I can show you this with this magnet, if I come close to it, you can see it gets attracted into it, and it's kind of hard to remove. So, south pole here, north pole here, gets attracted, of course. If I rotate it, also still south pole, of course, it gets attracted. But only up until this point here. Then it gets attracted to the side, but I can't push it further inside. So 
That might seem confusing because it's not like with a regular magnet where we have north pole here and south pole here, but with this array we have north pole here and also north pole here and on the side south pole. To show you this a bit easier, I have this small circular ring array which also have all poles facing the same direction and as you can see, if I view it from here, we have south pole here, if I rotate it, we also have south pole here. So basically we have the same polarity on each side and of course on the outside here we have our north pole. So if you can imagine, if you look at this, especially the top ring, they are basically identical to this array. So we get the same polarities on each side and yeah, on the outside um, the opposite polarity. And this is what happening with this array. So now I will take these two arrays and put them together like this. And then you will see the polarity on here is south and also the polarity on here is north. So this changed our overall polarity. Remember, if I put it through here, this is also north. Here, south, if I put it through here, it flips to north, but this is also south. So now we have inverse polarities that are tracked together. Which is kind of interesting to see. And another interesting aspect of this array is that you can use it as a kind of an accelerator for magnets. So if I take these two neodymium magnets straight through here and I have to push them in like this and then I will take my hand just to slow it down. As you can see I push them through up until here where the field reach reaches zero and if I put it further than this point it will shoot out very violently and yeah basically will accelerate really fast if I hadn't had my hand there it will shoot like three meters horizontally and at least one and a half meters vertically or almost two, ma two meters it is very very rapid and what it shoots out so this array could also be used as an accelerator to if you shoot magnets through here and yeah that's basically most of what I wanted to tell you about these arrays um, maybe there will be future, future applications of this we will see so this is it for now so if you have questions you can of course ask and thanks for watching, have a nice day and goodbye.